Next, we're just going to create your pages, but not like the layout, just creating them. So go to your outline for your site and find your pages section. Then go to your dashboard. Go to pages, add new or all pages. Delete the sample page. Now add new. Now add your pages. So I'll add home, finish, click the back end editor, finish. Then you're going to do manage page elements, go to remove page title, make this a stick template, remove the breadcrumbs, and then just move those uh, up and then hit publish. And you're going to do that for all your pages. So you have them. Don't worry about the URL right now. Just add new and keep adding all the pages like we just did with the first one. And the reason we do this is because, um, so the manage page elements, you don't want the page title because that looks shitty on the page. You want the stick template so there's no spacing on the menu. And breadcrumbs are like the navigation that's like in between the page title and the, um, and the page content. Even though I'm not making a blog, I'm making the blog just so I can show you how you make a blog. So create a page for the blog. So now go to the uh, front of your site by clicking test or whatever you named your site at the top left hand corner. As you can see, it's kind of just like a blog right now, which we don't want. See the hello, world, hello world's the title and stuff. So customize. You're going to go to home page settings, the second to last one, and you're going to click a static page and then you're going to click home and you're going to click your post page for your blog. And then you're going to click publish and then X out of that baby. So now go to uh, see the add a menu in the corner, click that and we're going to add a menu. Name it whatever you want. Create menu, click primary navigation, and then add all your pages, select all, and then you can drag and drop these things around. So you want your, um, I don't want the home page there on though, so I shouldn't have added them all. So I just X out and remove them. Um, you keep in mind that you want your menu items to be like from most important to least important because that makes a difference in, um, and you can add a link too. So you would just put your link there and then your link text, which you could put like a phone number or whatever and, uh, add that to the menu too. But what I was saying was if you, um, you want to put the most important thing first, so, and the second most important thing this in second and the third most important thing the third so on and so forth because people read from left to right now let's test visit site and omg we have a menu folks we're making progress making moves okay so go to theme options at the top See this like gray border? Ugh, it's giving me anxiety. I hate it. We gotta remove it. <laughs> I don't wanna see any gray borders. So go to main content, layouts, and backgrounds. Go to the page title right there. And then we want to go to that and click clear. And then we're gonna save the settings. Go to header. Scroll down, get rid of that bottom border again. We want to just remove it, backspace, and make that zero. Save settings. Woohoo! No more anxiety, it's gone. Yay! Now let's talk about theme options. So we're going to start at the top in the global settings. 
and we're going to change the accent color, color to your primary uh, color that you chose in your style guide. This will be for the main things in your site, like hover colors and stuff like that. Save it. Oh, get rid of smooth scroll too. I hate when p computers take control of my computer with their scrolling crap. Now let's go to logo and title below that and upload your logos. The default and dark logo will be your main logo and your logo that appears on a dark background. So you're just going to upload by clicking select files. And I have my logos right here on my desktop that aren't um, named correctly. Name your, name your stuff better than me. I was just trying to go fast. And then like fill in the title, the alt text, and the just image description um, just for SEO purposes. The sticky header logo is the logo that when you scroll up and the header stays, that's your sticky header. Again, do the page title, alt text, and description. Skip the caption. Try to use the same dimensions I used. We can skip the light logos and stuff. We're, okay, so a favicon is the thing that's in your um, browser window the icon that's in your browser window. If you don't have a, um, if you can't make your own icon by just, you know, making a square image, um, then you're going to want to go to favicon.cc and you're going to want to upload your logo. Choose the file and then upload that thing. And then you can play around with it so it makes like uh, sense. And clearly I'm just fucking it up. But as you can see, you can change it by doing uh, clicking the last use colors and then, you know, making it right. And then you would download it below where it says download favicon. And then go back and upload that baby. Another good name for the file. Just make sure it's a square. So you can make it in Photoshop, you can make it whatever, just make sure it's a square and it's small. And then save. Preloader, leave that thing off. Unless you want one, which I don't suggest. The quick contact form is the form at the bottom of your site where it has an email button and can um, someone can ping you right away. I leave all these options the same, but maybe change like the title and description. Tyler, I have a different API integrations um, video I'm going to use so you can cut this whole section. Now let's go to main content, layouts and backgrounds, leave all that, text. Actually, we can probably cut that last part. Damn it.
can we hide that last um or actually we're cutting this part because i already have this in another thing So go to main content, layouts and backgrounds, make it a stick template, and then that was where you change your footer um, color by just clicking single color or gradient, and then uh, you could put a background image too. Go to text. Oh, I forgot to save those settings. Don't do as I do. Do as I teach. <laughs> I'm going to change the text size because I hate when text size is too small on a website. I'm like young, I feel like still, and I shouldn't have to <laughs> like squint or zoom a bajillion times. Use your neutral colors that you chose for the text color and the content links. Use your... Um, your primary accent color. Content links hover, choose a good color for uh, from your style guide. So people know when they're hovering over, you know that it's a link, that's helpful. Strong tag color would be like your bold fonts. Using, I would use probably the content links color. be honest I'm not sure what the difference between body the body text and the paragraph text is I should ask Jupiter um, but yeah so I just change it anyways now it's gonna make everything like uppercase as you can see on the right hand column and I don't like that so I'm gonna put none and just style it myself I always choose the boldest fonts for headings because I think that makes sense I don't know it makes sense to me do whatever you uh, or your little heart desires. So just click none for all of those in the right hand corner and pick whatever size you want for each thing in the left hand corner. These are for headings. H1, H2, H3, H4, H5, H6. Um, 
you want to make sure your site is well formatted and uses heads, uh, headings and subheads so Google understands it and so people can easily read it. Um, yeah, so just make sure to choose all that so you don't have to go through and um, reset them every time for each page. It'll just be in the settings. And don't forget to change the colors to your neutral color and not just the black that it has. Um, And my sizes might not be right in the H headings. Um, I kind of like, I don't follow a formal type. I just kind of like see what looks right and kind of, kind of go from there. Save settings. Page title, don't display the page title, save settings, breadcrumbs, remove, save settings, typography. So whatever fonts you chose, pick them. I picked pop-ins. So I'm just going to backspace that and start typing in pop-ins. Then I'm going to click the arrow. And then I'm going to choose my elements that I want that for, which is the heading. So I'm going to choose all the headings. Then I'm going to go on and choose some more, which is the global page titles, all the page title ones I'm going to choose, even the ones I don't have installed just because I'm like OCD. Main navigation I want to have the big bold fonts, the buttons. Fancy title, gradient buttons, another title, contact form, Pricing table, headings. And then I'm going to click the plus sign at the bottom. And I'm going to choose Roboto because that's what I want to use. And I'm going to click the green check mark and click body in paragraphs. And then save settings. Now go to the header section, turn off the toolbar, unless you really want to keep it, but I don't, I don't really prefer it. Of course, you don't have to do everything I do though. <laughs> Leaving all this stuff the same. I'm getting rid of the search form because we don't really need it. We don't have a lot of content. And then you can choose your, uh, your hover style. I personally like the second hover style. I think it's minimal and looks nice. The top level menu, I choose the biggest, boldest fonts usually. I like to make my menu text a little bit bigger. Grab your primary color for the top level hover and current skin color where it's orange right now. You're going to want to make that your primary color.
make that capitalized for the top level text case unless you want uppercase or something. I turn that to 16. I leave the gutter space usually. But for some reason, I had it saved at 16. We can cut that. Top level text color, make sure it's the color of your neutral color. For the top level hover and current skin color, change it to your primary color. For the top level hover and current text color, pick one of your other colors from the style guide that you want. And remember, it's only for hover styles three and four. So if you have like one through or one or two, then you don't need to do that. I skip the sub level because I don't have a sub level menu. And then I skip the social network icons because I don't think you want people to leave your site. So I disable it. I don't think you want people to leave your site like right away, right? So I put them in the footer. Go to header toolbar, remove the login form. This is above the menu, the small one. You can put your phone number, email address if you wanted to. This is where you change the background color and the colors of the fonts in the toolbar. So I'm going to leave all that the way it is at the top. Then you can choose your columns. For the footer, I chose three columns. You can leave all that the same. I like my title text at 900 because that's big and bold. Capitalize is good. Text weight's good at 400 normal because that's just normal for the body. Text size 16. And then I've already chosen my text color and my footer links color and then the links hover color for the footer. So you can go ahead and save that. Next we're going to go to footer and we're going to leave all that at the top the same. Pick your columns. I picked three. Leave all that at the same. And then I picked 900. Um, because I like big bold fonts. Just capitalize just so it's title text case. Leaving the colors and everything else the same. Text weight normal because it's body. 16 is a good size so you don't have to squint. Text color I already chose, links colors I already chose, and footer links hover color I just chose white. So you'd save that. Then for the sub footer, I'll copy and paste the sub footer copyright text for you in the HTML below. that's where you put like made with love by Lauren copyright by baked so on and so forth you can change the background color of the subfooter at the bottom if I do it's very much like pretty much the same and then the copyright text could be like you know 13 and then the copyright text could be like white or gray depending on your background color Then we're going to appearance widgets. And you'll see first footer, second footer, third footer, fourth, fifth, sixth widget areas. Since I have three columns, it's going to be the first three widget areas. And then I'm going to click on, um, as you can see, this is what my footer looks like. Column one, column two, and column three. And then that's my sub footer. If I go back to widgets, you'll see the custom HTML is the first thing. I put a bunch of breaks in because I wanted it to be lower in the footer. As you can see, there all the breaks are there. And that's why I bake so low. Next, I put an image that you can't see. It just is the baked logo in white. And you can do that by just dragging that image um, element or available widgets to the first footer widget column or whichever one you want it on. Then there's the social networks. 
which you can find towards the bottom. And you just put um, what size you want them to be, how you want them aligned and all that stuff. It's pretty self-explanatory. Um, if you want a custom icon, you'd have to go to, you'd have to pick how many you want. And then you'd um, have to go to the media uh, on the left-hand side of the dashboard under posts. And you'd have to upload the images, the social media images. And then grab the link and put it here um, under custom icon 1. So you go to add new. upload the media so I would just google like social media png and icons free or something like that and you just want to make sure they match um so I would try and find like a pack of them there's definitely ones out there for free I got some for free so just look in um google image search or there's probably like a long listicle of them so I just grab the URL there after I go to my media library and then I go back to my widgets and I drop in that icon color or uh, URL. Next, I'm going to show you like it's a menu of my pages. So I do custom HTML, some more breaks because I want it to be like all centered. And then I go to... Um, my pages to learn more and then the third footer is just another break and of course I just sorted it by page title for the pages the custom HTML is just maps a map that I generated, you go to maps-generator.com and fill in the information, like the title of the business, the street it's on, its zip code, city, then the type of map you want. But first you click, um, where do I find this key? At the bottom, and it'll open this page. Just follow the instructions, it's really, really simple. You'll request a key. And then you'll drop that key into where it says Google Maps API key. And then you can see the different types of maps that they have. Then you just paste your code into where you want it, which I wanted it at the bottom of my footer on the right. Okay. 